Happy Final Four Saturday, my friends. Oh, it's one of the best days of the year. We've got a great matchup between four amazing teams. I cannot wait to watch these games tonight. Hopefully, you guys are going to be watching them too. I've got a few best bets in these games for you. Let's get into it. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Noble Living, back with another DYF Bets video where I'm breaking down my favorite picks and plays for the day as we just try to get to the bag together and make some money. Yesterday, we finally had our first winning day of April. We needed that like air, baby. And trust me, it came through almost a sweep. Jordan Poole came short for us we were just two points away from being able to sweep the board he only finished the game with 20 or 21 points so you hate to see that but red sox first five money line great value there no sweat bet there they got out to a quick start got a little sweaty in the sixth inning when the angels hit a home run when you were gonna maybe take the full game money line but listen the red sox pulled off the first five money line that's why we just isolated to the starters not the ball pens and it cashed in for us and then the mariners and brewers nerfy also cashed in for us we love to see that two and one on the day still a little bit of a rough start to april you can say your today record right here five and ten to get the month started but we've got a lot of month ahead of us a lot of ways to bounce back and the three best pets today might get us a little bit closer to that so make sure you guys are liking this video and subscribing to the channel because these winners today and the winners that will be coming on for the rest of the season and then on monday college basketball slate you definitely don't want to miss those appreciate all the love and support now let's dive into these best bets so for my best bets of the day, guys, I'm going to kind of give you guys my analysis on these games. You probably know where I stand on both of these picks because if you've been tapped into the channel, you do know that we have a future pending on Purdue right now to win the national championship at plus 700. So I will be rooting for them right now in this game, but I cannot take either of these teams on the spread because the spread is just way too big for such a big matchup as I do think that one of these teams or one of the underdogs, I should say, will cover. Now, obviously, a lot of money is on Alabama and a lot of money is on NC State as those are the two darlings. That's where the value is at plus nine plus nine and a half plus 10 plus 11 wherever your book has it at so i do understand why people are going with the underdogs but when we really look at these games on paper it's pretty hard to go against the favorites in this matchups because i mean purdue i mean truthfully they're just so good and uconn we obviously know what they've been doing they've been on an absolute not just a tear but a cover tier as well since their national championship last year they've covered every single game in this tournament and last tournament so it's pretty hard to bet against that but i'm going to look at a total in the first matchup between purdue and nc State date and because of that i'm gonna go over 146 and a half minus 110 odds probably ask yourself noble why are you going with the over the line has been actually moving towards the under and you're absolutely right but i think we're actually getting value on this over because of that and because of how both of these teams looked in their last matchups now purdue in their last game against tennessee they won that game 72 66 and that game did end up going under the 148 total that that game had purdue has actually only gone over in one of the games in this tournament and that was in the second round against utah State state in the four games that they played so far thus so far in the tournament they've gone under in three of the four games meanwhile nc state on the other side they've done the same exact thing they went under in their last game against duke and that's uh, that was a total of 142 and they've gone under against marquette they went under against texas tech the only game that they went over was against oakland so i get why people are on the under here because again when you look at the trends of how these teams have been playing over the tournament then guess what it tells you to take the under but when i've been looking at these offenses it's very hard for me to not take the over in here because I think that we have two prolific offenses that are going to go head to head in a marquee matchup in a big spot like the final four and because of that I think that we're going to get a lot of offense today Purdue you guys know the numbers on them second and adjusted offensive efficiency 13th and effective field goal percentage they also rebound the ball at a very high rate thanks to Zach Eady number six in the country they have the second best three-point shooting team in the country they also do very well on the inside in terms of hitting 54 percent from two-point range and they can also hit free throws as well I mean Zach Eady is not an automatic free throw shooter but he's been shooting the ball at 72 percent from the free throw line thus far in the tournament and considering how often he gets fouled that's pretty good now nc state on the other side their offense is not that bad either so far in the tournament their offense is actually 20th in adjusted efficiency overall in the year it was about 40th they actually rank ninth in turnover percentage so that's really good as well because they don't turn over the ball a lot and purdue does not force a lot of turnovers and then we also just know what this offense can do with the weapons that they have with dj burns dj horn so for me i think that's just going to be a matchup here where there's going to be a lot of up and down scoring and because we have such a high number here in terms of on the spread if nc state expects to compete in this game i don't think that they can get down into like a half court offense because the way that i look at this it's like who's going to score in the half court for them because dj burns he's taking the country by storm he had that huge game against duke where he had 20 plus points but when you really look at the numbers it's like 
ah, they don't, they, they, the NC State hasn't faced any true, true big men like they're going to face against Purdue. I mean, yeah, Duke had Filipowski there, and he is a big man, but he's more of a stretch big man. He's not a guy who's blocking a lot of shots. He's not really a defensive anchor. Zach Eady's not really a defensive anchor either, but he's that person that demands an amazing presence there in the paint. He clogs up the middle there, and it's going to force DJ Burns to have to short, shoot a lot of mid-range shots. He's not going to be able to get over his left shoulder as much as he's been able to to get that little baby jump hook going. So because of that, I think that it's going to force the guards of NC State to have to really step up. It's going to have to force Jaden Taylor to hit some shots. It's going to face Casey Morsell to have to hit some shots. Obviously, Joy DJ Horn's going to have to have a big game. Mitchell O'Connell's going to have to have a big game. These are some of the things that are going to have to happen for NC State in order to win this game or at least be competitive in this matchup, and that's why I lean towards the over. When you look on Ken Palm as well, they have this game as an 81-71 to 71 finish. That's actually 152 points. It's very rare that you see Ken Palm's line be completely drastically different than the books line. So again, that makes me know that there's a lot of money coming in on the under, a lot of money that's coming on the trend. And when you have a popular game like this, like a Final Four, when you're getting a lot of public money, when you're getting a lot of people trying to get action, because you know, it's a, it's a popular game. It's a Final Four, right? So you're not, the, the lines you have to kind of take with a grain of salt here and the movement as well, because you have to understand that you're getting money on these games from guys that you normally would not be getting if it was a regular, regular season game, a regular game, you know, any other time. So because of that, I trust Ken Palm's analysis here. I trust their numbers here. And the fact that we're getting five to six points of value here on the over, I actually really like that as well. And I think that this is going to be a matchup here where Purdue's offense is going to be able to get whatever they want. And then if NC State knows that they have to keep up with this game, they're going to also have to shoot a lot of threes. And then Zach Eady, we know what they're going to do to him on the inside. They're going to foul him. He has such a huge height advantage as well on both DJ Burns and Diara. So because of that, I think that's also going to force, you know, a few kickouts, double downs, and that needs that Braden Smith, Fletcher Lawyer, Lance Jones may be able to get some good looks from the three-point line. And they've been hitting the three-point shot at a crazy rate thus far in the tournament. So some regression is due, but I don't think that's going to happen today. So just give me the over in Purdue and NC State as our first best bet of the day. Now, my second best bet of the day, I kind of alluded already to what it might be because we're going to go with a player prop here. I'm actually going to give you two player props in both of these games because of the fact that, hey, I think we're not going to have the opportunity to take player props in college basketball much longer. If you guys have been paying attention to the news, the gambling world, right, they've started to outlaw player props on the college slate. But because of the way that DJ Burns is going to demand attention from Zach Eady and that they're going to force him to shoot the mid-range shot, I think that's going to fall on DJ Horn today to have to score for the NC State Wolfpack. So give me his over 16 and a half points, minus 110 odds on MGM. Make sure that you shop around here. Now, DJ Horn, he's been a catalyst for this NC State offense. Obviously, DJ Burns has been getting the headlines. He's been getting the, the love and the attention, rightfully so, because he's demanded a lot of the attention. But DJ Horn, he's the guy who's been scoring the points for NC State, in all honesty. In that Duke game, he had 7 of 16 from the line, 2 of 6 from the 3-point line, finished with 20 points in that matchup. In the Sweet 16 matchup against Marquette, he shot 6 of 15 from the field, 4 of 7 from the 3-point line to go with 19 points. You love to see that, right? So we've seen him been able to have big games. Even in the ACC Championship game against UNC, 29 points in that matchup to go with 9 of 15 from the field and 9 of 11 from the free throw line. That is what NC State is going to have to do today in order to be competitive against Purdue because I believe that Purdue is not going to let DJ Burns beat them. They're going to say, let these guards hit these threes. Let these guards stretch the floor. If they beat us, cool. And if DJ Horn can get to the free throw line as well for some extra cushion on top, and we've seen him been able to get to the free throw line. He's averaging about five free throw attempts per game thus far in the tournament. That's good. We should see him get a few extra points at the line, but we know this is a guy who can turn up at any time. We've seen him against good competition. He dropped 20 points against UNC in the regular season, 32 against Syracuse, 27 against Clemson, 31 against Wake Forest, 25 against Pitt, 24 against Georgia Tech, 27 against Louisville, 26 against Detroit Mercy. Like, this is a guy who knows how to score. He's a volume scorer, and the fact that we're getting at 16 and a half points, and again, I already lean towards the over, and I feel like because Zach Eady's presence is going to really kind of hold DJ Burns some more of addition and diming and more of a facilitator role. The question is going to be who's going to score for this NC State Wolfpack team, and I believe that's going to be DJ Horn. He's gone over this in the last two games. He hooked on the first game of the tournament at with 16 against Tennessee Tech. He only had 11 in that second round matchup against Oakland, but he just didn't have the best shooting day, only one of six from the three-point line. If he has a bad shooting day, then NC State loses this game easily. They also lose the game on the spread. So for me, this is my way of playing NC State a little bit. If I get to the window on them, I might do it live, but for me, I'm going to go with DJ Horn over 16 and a half 
five points because I don't think DJ Burns is going to be as big of a factor in this matchup as we've seen him in other matchups just because of Zach's E's presence. And then also at the same time, the way that the guards play and they crash down in the post as well, it's going to kind of prevent DJ Burns from kind of getting into that rhythm. And Zach Eady's length, because he's more than six inches taller than DJ Burns, is going to be a problem. And keep in mind, DJ Burns could get into foul trouble early as well because he's going to be, we've seen what the refs have been doing in terms of calling fouls for Zach Eady this tournament. He's been getting calls every single game. I'm not betting against that right now. So it's hard for me to back a big man with uh, NC State just because I don't even know if he's going to be on the floor enough in all honesty. I mean, yeah, Kevin Keats is going to be able to have to push it a little bit for him to be able to get out there. But I mean, I just don't know if he's going to be able to get two quick fouls early. Next thing you know, he has to sit for five, six, ten minutes in the first half. And then that's going to get force DJ Horn to have to step up. So I'm going to go DJ Horn over 16 and a half points as our second best bet of the day. Now, third and final best bet of the day is another player prop. And we're going to go to that UConn Alabama game. And I think UConn wins this game. I don't know if they cover the spread. Alabama is obviously the darling team here. 11 and a half point spread. And the fact that they shoot a lot of threes means that that can keep them in the game. And I like the fact that they can do that. Because of that, I think it's going to force UConn to maybe have to play a little bit of small ball. And it's actually might force Donovan Klingon out the game. Now, we saw Donovan Klingon had an amazing game in the elite eight matchup where he had over 20 points to go with 10 rebounds he had a great double double game there but if alabama goes with the small ball lineup with grant nelson at the five and they're stretching out the floor running that five out three pointers donovan Klingon becomes a liability there and because he becomes a liability if they're hitting their three pointers they can't trade threes for twos and because of that we're going to have to look at the best other player for uconn and that's tristan newton we're going over 16 and a half points here as well minus 115 odds now tristan newton is a guy who's no stranger to having to score buckets he's not a guy who's not accustomed to not stepping up so far in the tournament we saw him score 17 points against san diego state we saw him have 20 points against northwestern he only had 13 points against stetson but he only played 29 minutes of that game due to the blowout so for me this is a guy who can def, def, most definitely score the points that uconn needs in order to get over this hump now he only had five points in that game against illinois a very bad shooting day for him all of six from the field all three from the three-point line only five or six from the free throw line but Keep in mind, that was kind of a blowout from the onset, right? Like, literally, after the last, like, two, three minutes of the first half, UConn ran away with that game, and they never looked back. So they really didn't need his scoring in that matchup, and they realized pretty early that the advantage was with Donovan Klingon, and that was the guy whose game it was to eat. Like I just mentioned, I don't know how much of a factor Klingon is going to be in this game because of the way that Alabama stretches the floor, because of the way that Alabama can shoot the ball. And this is a matchup that's going to be high scoring, so I really can't take a look at the over here. I can't really take a look at you know maybe the spread here and i think that also the fact that alabama is getting back a key guy back in this matchup as well in the trail right cell junior who missed the last two games with a head injury that's going to also add another three-point shooter to this lineup so for me it's just one of those things here where i don't know what the lineup that nate oates is going to go with but if he's got nelson stretching the floor if he's got griffin there obviously we know what some of the other offensive weapons for alabama can do in terms of shooting the ball it's going to be three-point shooting versus three-point shooting mark sears is going to be able to get to his spot to strike is going to be able to get to his spots so i believe that here it's going to be on tristan newton to step up the senior who's been in this position before donovan Clinton, the 7-2 guy i just don't know how much of a factor he's going to play in the matchup ken Aikhead has the number one offense in the country in adjusted efficiency number seventh in effective field goal percentage number four and two point percentage number 69 and three point percentage shooting so because of that i think tristan newton is going to be a guy that has to contribute at a very high level for them to win this game and to also cover the spread and i think it's again it's going to be a high scoring game we've also seen Alex Alabama give up points to guards thus far in the tournament. Joe Girard had 19 points for Clemson in the last game to go with five three-pointers. In their win against UNC where Nelson had 24 points, RJ Davis still had 16 points and he did not shoot the ball at, well at all. 4 of 20 from the line, he didn't hit a single three-pointer and guess what? I think that Newton could be able to hit with one or two three-pointers that gets him over this hump and we also saw Cormac Ryan in that matchup finish with 17 points in that game. So again, we've seen guards be able to go off even Grand Canyon in that matchup. We saw Grant Foster, 22 points there. So for me, I think that the advantage lies with the guard play in this game. And I'm going to go Tristan Newton over 16 and a half points as our third and final best bet of the day.
Well, that's it for me today, my friends. For more best bets and picks and plays, maybe in baseball, my nerfy of the day, click the link, join the Discord group. I'll also drop a few plays on Twitter as well. So, But those are kind of the looks that I'm going with for the final four here. I'm going to go with the over in Purdue and NC State. I'm also going to go with Tristan Newton over 16 and a half points. DJ Horn over 16 and a half points. As I think this is going to be a game dominated by the guards. And then obviously Purdue, you got the big man Edie there. Pretty hard to handicap what he's going to do. But also at the same time, we know he's going to get the foul calls. You know he's going to be able to be on the floor and be a big presence there. So it's going to be hard for me to lay the points on either of these guys unless I'm looking at the game live. So I do lean Purdue. Obviously, I do lean UConn. They're the two best teams in the country. And I said that at the beginning of the tournament. I can't, I said that at the beginning of the tournament that these are the two teams that should face off in the national championship. And they're the only two teams where Zach Eady is going to face another big man who can probably compete with him. So we've got a future that's pending right now on Purdue to win it all. We, I would not be surprised if we have UConn and Purdue, two number one seats, facing off on Monday night. And if we do, then I'll be back with some more picks in place to break that game down for you guys. All right, my friends, be safe out there today. Have a great time watching these games. And if you want some more picks in place, baseball winners, NBA winners, then make sure you click the link in the description, and I'll see you guys on this side. All right, my friends, have a day. Let's get to that money, and I'll see y'all later, gang.